Happy New Year, Canucks fans. The Canucks enter 2023 on a bit of a losing streak, begging the question, do they have enough time and talent to make the playoffs? I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, January the 1st. Yes, it's New Year's Day 2023. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season, so we're going to have to move a little bit, but with your help, I know I can do it. Tonight, 10.30 p.m., my regular Sunday night live stream. We're going to bring in the new year in style, have a new look I want to debut. We're going to do a giveaway, so make sure you join me tonight at 10.30 p.m. for my regular live stream. I know it's New Year's Day. I'm not going to get too reflective about 2022. I'm not going to look too far ahead to 2023. I want to talk about the here and the now. I want to talk about last night's game, the 3-2 loss to Calgary to wind up the 2022 season. When you just step back and look at the game itself, it, Calgary was the better team. They outshot the Canucks. They were better in the face-off circle. They were better on special teams. And overall, the one thing I really noticed is Calgary's quite aggressive, especially on their penalty kill. They never really gave our power play a chance to set up and get good looks. And they were, I think they, were, they scouted or they were coached well, whatever it was. But I noticed that they were simply winning more puck battles. And that's the one thing I really noticed when I watched this game in its entirety while we had some relatives and friends over. So as I said, the Flames outshot the Canucks 30-24. to And special teams was a big difference. The power play, uh, neither team scored. Calgary went over 2 but the Canucks went 0-4. for And the Canucks power play, which has been quite good this season, has dried up quite recently. So... Uh, not surprisingly corresponding with their, their two-game losing streak here. Remember, they were a game over 500. Now they are a game under 500 because of their last two losses, Winnipeg on Thursday and then Calgary last night. When you look at the individual stats, I would say that as a line, the, the Dry's Besser Garland line was probably the best line of the night, but I thought PD was the most dominant individual performer. So you look at the Dry's Garland Besser line, they combined for the first goal, that nice uh, hand-eye goal by, by Dries. To, it was the, the first Canucks goal. It didn't happen until the, the middle of the second period or the end of the second period. But yes, that was Dries from Garland. And then, of course, Petey with the, with the rebound goal after the bear shot, the Horvat uh, deflection, and then Petey on the, on, on the rebound. So those were the two Canucks goals. Then prior to that, yeah, you know, goal one and goal two, were almost uh, carbon copies of one another, two on ones, and they happened eight minutes apart. The first one was Elias Lindholm from Tyler Toffoli, and that was off a, a pretty bad pinch by Oliver Ekman Larson, and then a pretty bad covering job by JT Miller led to a two on one, and Lindholm uses Toffoli as the, the decoy and shoots and scores. And then shorthanded, uh, two on ones are bad anyways, but to have them happen shorthanded, really weak play inside the Canucks zone and uh, sorry inside the calgary zone and then it was anderson and coleman that go on the two on one anderson gets across to coleman and coleman beats martin and then the third goal by calgary dominant shift the fourth line of the canucks pinned in i think it was ekman larson and myers pinned in and sure enough mackenzie Weger scores his first of the season mind you from the point um having said that even though spencer weren't landing three goals in that second period he was solid he made some really really good saves and this game could have been a lot worse. Stop me if you heard that before. This game could have been a lot worse if not for Martin. Martin ends up making 27 saves on 30 shots. That's easy math. That's a 900 save percentage. I want to talk about a couple guys that I think really struggled last night. And I, this, it was more eye test stuff. And then it was certainly backed up by the analytics. Tyler Myers, oh, every time he gets the puck in the Canuck zone, it's an adventure. He often gives the puck up, turns, turns the puck over, does not ever make clean breakout passes, either into a guy's skates, up the boards, icing, loft. The loft passes are okay. The Canucks, they seem, they seem to do that as a team a lot. That seems to be some of their strategy is loft the puck up through the neutral zone, let it bounce, and then maybe some havoc is created from there. But Myers had a really, really bad night. He was uh, very noticeable, and not just because of his size. He was a minus two with no hits. And only one block. So that is not a great stat line at all. And then uh, his defense partner was hardly any better. Ekman Larson was minus two. But at least he had three shots on goal. But also no hit. So 
Myers and Ekman Larson had no hits. Even Shen only had two hits. So that's a, a kind of an off night for Shen as well. So I thought Myers had a bad night. And I also thought JT Miller had a bad night. I know a lot of people are kind of be ragging on him a little bit because of the whole Dilia and, and Miller situation at the end of the, the Winnipeg game. But yes, uh, JT Miller, he had minus one, two penalty minutes, one shot, two hits. So at least he's a little more active than, the, say, those two defensemen. But he just, um, you know, on both goals, he, he didn't look great. The, the first one was a direct result of a poor play by both him and OEL not covering that left side of the blue line. And then the second goal, the shorthanded goal, he was one of the culprits in that uh, he wasn't um, – uh, kind of went for a, a slow line change. It wasn't yeah, absolutely his fault that they scored that second goal, but still not the best look for JT Miller. And I know I know a lot of people are concerned about how that contract's going to age. Remember, he hasn't even entered into his new seven-year contract yet. It kicks in at the start of next season, so he is not there yet. Now, when I step back and look at the big picture and I look at the Canucks trying to make the playoffs, they on one hand, I say, well, they're doing actually okay considering that Thatcher Demko has not played for them for the past four weeks, um, and he's got probably another three or four weeks to go. So for the Canucks to kind of fight their way back to 500 and, and teeter around the 500 mark without their starting goaltender, despite how poorly you played at the start of the year, I think that is saying something. You take a starting goaltender off many of these teams in the, across the league, and they would struggle a lot more than the Canucks have. But that's because Spencer Martin has played really well, actually, almost as equal, if not better, to what Demko is doing. So you can't even use Thatcher Demko as being injured as the reason, an excuse, or a reason why the Canucks are not higher in the standings than they are. So a couple of thoughts there, like PD's having a great season, Hughes having a good season, Kuzmenko having a good season, Horvath's had a really good season. So those guys have had a really good season, but then there's a lot of guys that are not having good seasons. Uh, Miller, Ekman Larson, Myers, anyone on our blue line basically except for Hughes. And then I, I think even the production effectiveness of our bottom six has kind of fallen off and of course, special teams have been an issue. Power play has struggled a bit. Penalty kill has always been poor. So you can see there's a myriad of issues that are affecting the Canucks right now. So as they enter 2023 in the standings, they are right now, they are 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They're 12th in the Western Conference, which isn't great. Um, they are six points out of a wild card spot right now. That, that gap could mean three, four with a couple games in hand, but the Canucks have lost a couple. So now they're six points out, and um, with 35 points in 36 games, they're 16, 17, and three, one game under 500. And then PD is still 44 and 34, which is awesome. Horvat's 40 points in 36. Then you have Kuzmenko with 32 and 35. Uh, Hughes with 30 and 32. Miller with 30 and 36. So those five still continue to drive the bus offensively for this team. So as I leave you tonight, as I go take a break, relax a bit on this New Year's Day, and then prepare for my live stream tonight at 10.30. My thoughts, uh, give me your thoughts about last night's game. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me one other thing. I don't do that as much anymore, but let me know. Also, now's a good time for, uh, you know, you don't have to drop your resolutions in the, <laughs> in the comments, but let me know what you want me, uh, what, what you want to see more of on this channel. And I, uh, I really value your feedback. So it could be more, uh, more timely post games, continue more live streams, more Zoom interviews, more storytelling, more breakdowns, more uh, reaction videos. Let me know. Let me know what you want to see on this channel, and I certainly love to take all your feedback. And my, one of my resolutions, speaking of resolutions, is to get more active in the comment section and start replying more to the comments that you leave. So uh, feel free to leave comments in my in my um, you know in all, in all my videos, and I appreciate your support as always. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate. Perform and transform personal training and weight loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and franchise members, and thanks to all of you for supporting me on this channel. If you're in the Lower Mainland, a week from today, Sunday, January the 8th, we're doing a meetup at Monkey Nine Brewing, the pub in Richmond, and it's an afternoon game, Canucks Winnipeg, starting at noon. So I hope that you see, uh, you make plans to join me, if you can, a week from today at Monkey Nine. Okay, friends, as always, subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you like to, leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership if you'd like to, and definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to. And definitely subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely subscribe. I'm going to push hard for that 10K by the end of April. Okay, friends, have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy. 
Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. See you tonight at 10.30 p.m. my New Year's live stream. God bless and go Canucks go.